Hey, what is up, YouTube? True Power Shad here, bringing you another episode of Inazuma Love and Go to Chrome Stone Par Paradox. Last time we left off, we played against a team from the Grandfather Grandfather Route or whatever it's called. We did win, but we only got two points, and I was aiming for S rank. It was on this team here. I do not know the name of the team, but. This team and Gold Bear are the only two teams that I need S rank in Chrome Stone, and um, once I've done that, I've S ranked every single team in this game, which will be pretty awesome. So um, we're going to play against Gold Bear today. Actually, this is the third time we'll be playing against them, and uh, the first time we played against them, we lost. The second time it was a tie, and the third time, third time is the charm. Hopefully, so maybe we will win. And <laughs> Yeah, also I've changed up the formation a bit. I've got Saru and Faye in the top two. Instead of Fubuki and Hakuru, I decided I'd give them a bit of a break today. We'll, you know, have a little rest after playing so many matches. And that, uh, um, you guys might want to see Saru and Faye. But anyway, here is our nemesis, the Golden Bear. The Bear of Gold. Oh my god, this team is very frustrating. I just... This team's very annoying. I don't care if I S rank them, I just want to win on camera. I have beat them before, but I have not beat them on camera. And it will be like a dream come true if I beat them on camera. Anyway, some stuff to talk about. If you guys remember in the Pyro Paradox video, uh, the one where I said it was complete, um, I said at the end of the video I'm going to be making a really uh, a long video that has all the team Caesar time, Mickey Transit, Keshins, etc. And um, I'm not quite finished it yet, as a matter of fact. I think I just hit the halfway point of finishing it today. I worked on it a bit before, or not a bit, a lot of it before. Try and just record his other clips, which is uh, taking a really long time, surprisingly, but I've nearly finished them um, now. I just need to generally get all the uh, Kashins and Mixy Maxes, and then I will be able to edit them all, and then I'll have to also edit some of those um, graphics I made. So, um,. Yeah, got a bit of a long road ahead of me to finish it, but I reckon I'll be able to finish it before, I'll definitely be able to finish it before a galaxy comes out, but I want to try and finish it at the end of this month, just because I, I set my goals, it was funny because last month I said my goal was to finish Chrome, um, my team by the end of the month, and I did, and now I'm going to try and finish the epic video by the end of the month, so, um, so yeah. Anyways, um, the thing that, um, the main thing I'm going to talk about today is the previous episode of Inazuma Love and Go Galaxy. I will just put my, just, opinion into it, but, um, it was the, um, it aired this Thursday. My god, my English is going just crazy, and, uh, it's been, I presume a lot of people have seen it, well, I presume everyone's seen it already, but, um, the reason why I didn't uh, make a video on this, um, sooner is because I, um, made a Pokemon video, so, uh, yeah, now the skills get Shin is beating our regular aggressive beats. That is, uh, that is no good. Alrighty, um, anyway, so this episode, uh, personally, it wasn't, it wasn't really an important episode. It was just pretty much, uh, pretty much, uh, what was it, what would you call it, uh, it's filled in some gaps in for, uh, certain plot points. For example, why the 11 players were picked, and, uh, is the coach really Kagama Reggie and the whole alien thing? So I'm um, basically at the start of the episode. Uh, yeah, for the start of the episode, um, a new um, alien character appears, Bitway Ozrock, and uh, everyone in the stadium is put to sleep. And it is revealed that Storm Wolf are actually um, aliens, and uh, Inazuma Japan is freaking out. It's like, what is this? Then um, Goenji walks in explaining uh, what happened. Uh, pretty much, what's Bitway Ozrock uh, is making the Earth compete in a um, tournament called the uh, Celestial Galaxy Tournament or something along those lines but it's pretty much a tournament that consists out through the whole galaxy and the winner gets to um and uh, if Bitsway Ozrock team wins uh, he gets to uh, pretty much take over the galaxy if you will because his planet's a dying race and uh, he wants to uh, move his species into you know different planets and apparently this species of aliens are extremely intelligent and uh, that's pretty interesting and they look they look human-ish I guess they've got that alien feel but they look human-ish human-ish is now a word and uh, these guys are just making crazy passes this match mm. 
Okay, uh, we might be able to stop you, but if not, we'll bring out Rokoko's Kashin. And deep mist. Nope, okay, uh, Rokoko's Kashin. Damn it! Okay, uh, this might be. This might be very bad. Actually, yo, we should be able to stop this. He didn't go for a Hizata. Or armed, um, so th we should easily be able to stop this. And I am correct. Very, very easily stop that, man. Rokoko is amazing. Alrighty, so, um. That was horrible. <laughs> Alrighty. Anyway, so he explains that and uh Bitsloy Ozrock and uh Goenji uh inform the uh, other world um leaders, the um leaders of other nations and uh they decided that they'd leave Goenji to make the uh team called the Earth Eleven. And yeah, that's pretty much what happened and oh yeah, Bitsway Ozrock took away the moon. So yeah, no more moon. <laughs> Alrighty, uh Let's go with uh, Saru here. Maybe Saru's Shelbit Burst will be able to take down Margin Great Stage Zero, which this Kashin is so damn powerful, Margin Great. Alrighty, alrighty. We've got a Mixy Max as well. Very nice. So, um, yeah, anyway, after all that happened, uh, it's the second half of the episode, and, uh, and Goenji's explaining that he was trying to find a suitable coach to, uh, to take the role of uh, training the Earth 11 and finding all the members and it seems that he's struggling a lot, he can't find uh, any suitable players, um, suitable coaches, sorry, and he's just, you know, having, pretty much he's got a headache because he can't find anyone and if um, they lose, uh, the, pretty much the Earth is pretty much screwed and of course he would stop that with the Great Hand. Okay. And now the Mixy Maxing even more, it's fantastic. And uh, then uh, the coach walks in, Midoriko Yusei, no, Midoriko Yusei, Luse, whatever his name is, and uh, you know, he's looking all high and mighty, and Gonji recognizes him as Kageyama Reji, and um, yeah, and then it ex explains that how Kageyama Reji survived his accident. Wait, no, that's not right. I screwed up the order of the episode. No, it's horrible. Alrighty. And then um, it's not revealed yet. He Gonji recognizes uh, Midoriko Yusei. Uh, it's Kageyama Reji, but um, he he changes his identity for uh, whatever reason. It doesn't really explain the reason, but um, then Shinto um says that uh he knows for a fact that uh their coach is actually Kageyama Reji. So he explains uh he asks how he survived, and then he explains by saying that uh pretty much uh when he was hit by that car, he uh he asked uh, no he was taken to hospital and uh. He, um, this is in Italy, so, um, they had to use an illegal Italian medicine, I think it was, to, uh, heal him, and it worked, and then he lived. Hooray. <laughs> That's pretty much exactly what happened, so, um, so, yeah, not much to say about that, just that he survived, pretty much, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, uh, let's go armed and use Psycho 11 Hundo here. Seems though Saru can use Margin Pegasus and Arthur's Mixie. I don't know. But anyway, Psycho 11 Hundo gets a power boost because of Margin Pegasus' special Kashin ability, which boosts the power of all Wind Hizata. And Psycho 11 Hundo so happens to be a Wind Hizata or Hizata. And this might probably. No, this might go in. Called it. Oh wow, it actually did. Sorry, you're amazing. Good thing I put you in the formation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, what else happened in this episode? Um, right then. Uh, then Kageyama explains why he picked the uh, members of Inazuma Japan, and he explains that um, each player in this team has this uh unique ability known as Soul, and pretty much what it is um Soul. This is how I like to define it. It's pretty much the place spirit animal. And um, they can call upon them during battle once they've like mastered it and become like one with their soul, and then they can transform into their inner beast, which is their soul. So um, that's how I like to put. Um, that's my definition of it, and that's pretty much how we explained it. And um, then Timmer realizes that's what Konoha did in the match, where her soul uh, started activating moderately, borderline. I don't know. Um, in the match against Stormwolf, so he realizes what that was, and then uh. Then uh, Shinto suggests we need more players, and and like 11 is not enough. Then uh, Kageyama was like, "But we have 12 players," and it's like, then Suruki's like, "No, we don't." Then uh, Endo walks in, and it's like, "Hello, uh, Tema, Shinto, and Suruki are pretty happy to see Endo, just because you know it's Endo. Why, why wouldn't you be, ha be happy to see him? And it's actually Endo's debut in Galaxy. So um, 
Yeah, after that, um, as a little joke, <laughs> Tema goes, he's, uh, Endo, Kanto, um, Endo playing with them as the Earth-11, and Endo's like, haha, no. That, that's pretty much exactly what Endo's like, but more enthusiastic and not as mean. And then, um, the, um, the new team member is revealed to be, uh, fake, I mean, new Xanark, and, uh, then that's the end of the episode. Uh, like I said, this episode just was to fill in some plot points, pretty much. It wasn't too exciting, but it did explain a lot. Even though pretty much everyone, well, I knew for a fact that why everything was happening, and it was pretty damn obvious that, considering episode one, Kiddo called, uh, Midoriya Yusei, or whatever his name is, I'm just gonna call him Rusei, uh, he called him Kageyama Reji. It was pretty damn obvious that it was Kageyama Reji. It looked exactly like him. Even in in Chroma Stone, when you get him as a coach, because you can get him as a coach in this game, um, he's wearing the same clothes as Kajiyama Reji always wears. It's pretty damn obvious that it was uh, that it was Kajiyama Reji the whole time. And even Fudo, when Resistance Japan debuted, even Fudo, the coach of Resistance Japan, calls him by Kajiyama Reji. So um, yeah, <laughs> and. Um, Anyway, next episode, um, pretty much in uh, in the episode preview, it's just showing that uh, New Mizuma Japan will be going to space. So, um, yeah, it's to be uh, exciting. And also, uh, I think Shisuke is joining the team next episode as well. It looks like it, not entirely sure. But um, some interesting things, because um, there's actually a new intro for it now. And uh, new intro for the series now. And uh, it revealed pretty much just like some team, the alien teams and... Uh, and some other important things, for example, the two girls that everyone's like speculating what they're gonna be in the uh, in the game, and it was revealed that they uh, the uh, more darker evil-looking girl has something to do with Surugi, and the uh, and the uh, nicer, like good-looking, uh, not good-looking, uh, how do I put it? The more uh, light-sided person, the person that's like on the good side, if you will. I don't know, if I say good looking, that means I'm like, I'm hitting on her, but I'm not, I'm just thinking she's the good person, the dark person, and the light person, okay, there we go, the darker kind of person is leaning towards, uh, not leaning towards, <laughs> damn it, uh, is, uh, has something to do with Surugi, and the, uh, other, more lighter looking person, the, is, uh, got something to do with Tema, now, um, there's a little alien thing that, uh, Hangs around Tema a lot in this uh, trailer, and that's the alien thing that hangs around that girl. So there's that, and also, um, I don't know. What, I think I read this on the Inazuma Eleven wiki. I think someone said that uh, the girls will have a crush on Surugi and uh, Tema, and vice versa. I I don't think that it's a possibility. And holy crap! Screw this game sometimes. Anyway, what was I was saying, oh, yeah, it's a possibility that there might be some crushing. I don't know, some love action going on in Galaxy with Aliens, I highly doubt that will, that will do that though. And, um, I don't know, love, there have been a weird, weird love plot points with, um, Kanaha and <laughs> Bandana Guy, I don't even know his name, I just call him Bandana Guy, because that's who he is to me, he's Bandana Guy. Anyway, um, let's just write on this momentum here, so that's interesting. And it's also shown that Tema is uh, got a golden soul, he doesn't transform to his uh, inner beast, but he go gets a golden aura. So um, that's going to be very interesting to see how that works, but um, a weird thing, the weird thing how like explained soul, it's pretty much like a shin, pretty much, but with animals instead. It doesn't make sense though, like they're pretty much replacing Kashin with animals, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. But maybe the aliens have an influence on the, uh, on the, uh, thingo. Yeah, alien influence. And uh, the plan here was to shoot chain, uh, Muckwind with Psychno 11 Hundo or Shelby Burst or whatever I felt like going for. But yeah, that's generally the, my summarize of the episode. Tell me what you think and, uh, of the episode. And, uh, yeah, now for some other news, uh, some other news, um, I was gonna say something, oh yeah, so, um, Fire the Eagle and Keshin Armed had to invite me to do a, um, new Inazuma 11 series, and, uh, I was planning to do it, but, um, in the end, I ended up changing my mind, just because, um, when I tried it out, I'm not gonna say what it is, um, it's got to do with Chrome Stone, of course, but, um, 
when I tried it out, it was way too difficult to do with the rules we had set in place. And it also, um, with what it is, it took, uh, it took away from me playing with, uh, Pyro Paradox pretty much, because if I did play with it, it would affect the, uh, the idea we're doing. I'm not going to say what the idea was, but I'm pretty much not doing it, but, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, they're still doing it or not. I'll probably have to ask them, but, um, if you want, go check out Fire the Eagle and, uh, Keshin Armed if you want to see what I'm talking about right here, and, um, Speaking of which, I'm also planning to start a new Inazuma 11 series very soon, and, um, yeah, it, and it, it has to do with a new team, but, uh, I think you guys like what I'll be doing, I think, not entirely sure, so, um, but we'll still be playing with Pyro Paradox, of course, uh, with the, this new idea I thought of, it's just, I'm not going to reveal too much about it, the next Chromastone video will be with it, and it'll be a separate series, so um, I think you guys will like it. And this, that series, and you know, will be going. You know, it'll, it'll just. Be, you, I, can't, I don't know. I don't want to say. I don't want to. Don't want to spoil anything, really. So, um, yeah, just stay for. Um, stay tuned for that, because um, I think a lot of people will enjoy it. Anyway, now let's try and get an A rank. Seems that we've got two points now, and uh, you know, the A rank would make me feel good. Like I tried to go for it last time, didn't. Didn't, didn't really work out well, and of course, they make some solid passes, and yeah, okay, time to mix you, mix you trans -caching. now I'm just going, alrighty, they haven't shot with the uh, Dazzle yet, with his overpowered northern impact of like the gods and stuff, alrighty, and uh, okay, down goes Saru, and alrighty, let's bring out, uh, let's bring out, what do you want to call it, Hiltor's Missy trans -caching. I should say Pendragon. The darkness becomes one with Tiltor, I don't know. Alrighty, oh, hello. Um, hmm, I'm gonna get armed and aggressive bait here. Just because I don't really feel like losing the ball. Because, you know, I'm like right at the goal. And I really like this Mixy Trans and Keshin armed combo with Okita and on Hiltor with I should say Pendragon. Looks, re looks really cool in my opinion. Okay, now we're here. Alrighty, just in time to score. Um, well, the score, we haven't scored yet, but it's time to shoot. Alrighty, let's think. I think the best option now would be to go for the aggressive beat. Not aggressive beat, what am I on? The, uh, Kiku Ichi Mochi, sorry. It might be able to go in, not entirely sure. But, um, it will be nice if it goes in. It might not, though, that's the thing I'm worried about. And it is a go. Oh, no, nah, the half is over now. Oh, good, we nearly made it, but, uh, hey, we won! We finally beat Gold Bear, and like I said, third time is the charm. Maybe it is because Saru scored with Sakno 11 Hundo, and helps Hema score with that Mark Wind shot chain. But, um, yeah, um, leave a comment about what you thought of the, uh, Galaxy episode this week, and, uh, yeah, that'll be really appreciated. But um, anyway, guys, we finally beat Gold Bear, and uh, yeah, that'll be all for today. See you guys next time. This is True Pirate Shadow signing out. Peace. And this is the bit where I'm just.